Welcome back to X and O's and Joe's. I'm Coach G about Clemens. One of the things that I really like about not necessarily the reason why you do it, especially the why I like the three rushes are going to come from that. Because I, be I'm going to show you today some five and six man the pressure to see I really exactly love what it is. Welcome back to X and O's and Joe's. I'm Coach Gene Clemens. I am excited to be here today talking with you about one of the things that I really like about three-man front football, especially out of the 33, and that's an ability to send, to send, to send pressure from multiple places. The reason why I run a 3-3 a three, three stack, not necessarily the reason why you do it, but the reason why I like a 30 front or a 3-3 three, three stack, um, and even the 3-4, is because it gives me the opportunity to be unpredictable from where our fourth and fifth and sixth rushes are going to come from. And because I can be and because I can be spontaneous and you as an offensive coach don't know what it is I'm going to do, I can have success getting you to play into the hands that I want played into. I'm going to show you today some five and six man pressures that I really love, pressures that work for me when I ran this defense, pressures I've seen other coaches have success with when they've run this defense. And so we'll really get an opportunity to kind of see exactly what it is we're looking at and why it is we do what we do. So definitely stay tuned. This is going to be a great episode. So one of the first things you want to do if you're running a 3-3 stack and you decide that you want to bring more than four, you want to bring five or six, you've got to answer a couple questions. And I've got them up here on the board. Number one is why. Why are you trying to send more than four? Is it because you're trying to stop the run? Or is it because you're trying to get more pressure on the quarterback? Understanding which one of these things you're trying to do is going to help you be more successful when you imply whatever blitz you decide to imply. If your, op if your thought process is, I want to stop the run, then there are certain things you need to do in order to make sure that you're playing into the hands of your defense to stop them from running. One of them, really simple and really quick, is if this is where the running back is, I always want to send my blitz from opposite of where the running back is. Most likely because when a, when a running back is offset the quarterback like this, Usually, whatever they're doing is coming towards the opposite way. Um, it might be a situation where they're coming, he's coming around and they're running an option. It may be a zone that way. It may be a power that way or a counter that way. It may be trap. But whatever, normally when this guy's on this side, if you're bringing pressure from this side, you're taking away the lanes that this running back has to run into and making them have to stop their feet completely to go back this way. That does not mean that you don't get situations where that guy will come and get it and come this way, but predominantly, this is what they like to do, something that goes opposite of where the back is, so you want to bring pressure from opposite where the back is. If your issue is I want to rush the pass, and I want to get more um, rushes on the pass. So you need to know what type of pass that you have. Is this a guy that stands in the pocket, maybe not as mobile? If so, you may want to bring more pressure up the middle that gets him off his spot. If this guy is an athlete, you want to make sure you bring pressure off the edges so you can dictate which way that, run, that, that, that quarterback that's an athlete runs or you can contain him so he doesn't get outside, which is usually where he makes his most money. The other two things is when I send five-man pressure, especially when I'm sending five-man pressure for passing, but it works for rushing as well, I need to ask myself, okay, does my, does my defenders know who are the flush people and who's there to clean up? And the person that's there to clean up can never be overly aggressive. They have to rely on the fact that the people who are there to flush are going to do their jobs 
to allow them to clean up. So for instance, if I brought a pressure off this side, these guys would be the flush. But whomever is the person on the backside, whether that's the end, whether that is this whip, whether it's the buck, whomever that person is off the backside, they have to be the cleanup. So they can't run in here wild and allow this person to escape that way away from the pressure. We know that sending pressure this way is going to make that quarterback escape this way. So this person has to be patient, close the distance under control so that they don't get shook and that they can make a tackle and or a sack in the backfield. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you some basic five-man pressures versus two by two, and then I'm going to show you how things change when, when they go three by one so that you can still run the five-man pressure that you're hoping to run. Okay, so every time we run a five-man pressure, we're going to have a name for it because we want our, our, our pressure to work together. We want our people to work together. I actually talked about this when I talked about five-man pressures out of the 34 defense. The principles are still the same here. So the buck, the mic, the stud, the demon, the whip, these are my names. Whatever your names are, you come up with whatever it is you want to call them. I know some people call this guy the anchor. And then this guy would be like the, um, the anchor and then the, the end or some type of way that they like to designate strong from weak. I don't believe in having strong or weak side ends. I want these guys to both be the same type of player or else I'm going to move them somewhere else where they can do something different. I need to have two guys who can play this the same and in a perfect world, three guys who are interchangeable up here that allow me to do what I like to do best, which is two gap up here. So we're talking about five man pressures. We wanna make sure that we keep these names straight. So right now our outside pressures, that is me wanting to send five guys and have guys come from the outside, right? So I can come with a bow blitz, that's my buck and my will Blitzing, I can come with my sod blitz or dose blitz where it's a demon and the stud coming that way. And what it really essentially looks like, this end displaces one gap. That guy comes off. This guy works to the A gap. The nose automatically knows that they're going opposite and then everyone else fills in accordingly. So we call a sod or a dose, whichever you like to call it. This end knows that it has to be C-gap guy right now. These three guys are going to replace in our cover six. And my cover six is essentially three over, three under, giving up the flats and rally into the point. So we would have that side or that dose that comes off edge. He knows he's there, he's there. That's a five man pressure. Opposite side, our bow or our web blitz which again, whichever you want to call it, here, he's off edge. Now this nose knows he's opposite. This end is now working that C gap. This guy knows that he's in coverage. He's there. He's working to the middle. He's working to the solar. So these seams, the solar, sorry, yeah, the solar, the star, and then the hawk in the middle. So the middle hole, the seam to the right, and the seam to the left, then the cover three guys behind it. So those are two easy outside blitzes. Now I'm going to show you two more outside blitzes that work off of these same guys 
that go against my principles of having things named after each other. And that is the strong and weak shock. Strong and weak shock. And it sounds just like it is. So it's either going to be a strong side blitz or it's going to be a weak side blitz. And we'll, we'll just assume that you all understand how our cover six works behind it. We're ju I'm just going to talk about the cover six today when it comes to the five-man pressures. Obviously, we know you can go man-to-man, -man, but I don't think I really need to tell you how to lock up everybody and then have a free safety mirror the running back. You all get that part. You're here for the blitzes. So we have the web or the bow where this guy goes to the B gap. We have the side of the dose where he goes to the B gap. But we have our strong and weak shock. And that is when our end is going to big stick to the A gap. Again, the nose goes opposite. Backside end goes C gap. And now what this does is it allows our stud to come B and our demon or our outside guy should come free off edge. Same three men, same uh, attacking the same way, but we've given the lineman a different look now. So now the linemen have to decide, okay, where am I going? Like, where am I going? Who am I picking up? And that's who we really want to that's who we really want to confuse. Remember, if we're coming this way, this guy has to be the cleanup guy. He has to be the guy that cleans things up because when this running back hits this and comes back that way, if he tries to bounce it, this end has to be there to clean up. That end can't just haul butt up the field. It has to get as deep as the deepest ball carrier and make sure that they keep it inside and close the distance. Now, if that back comes and tries to hit this B gap, boom, boom, we're here. Everybody's there to make a play. So show it to you from the other side. This is called weak shot because this is the weak side is where our whip is. This guy long sticks to the A gap. Buck off Ed, I mean buck off the B gap. Whip off edge, here's our nose into that side our NC gap, and everybody is the same. So, so far I've shown you four different blitzes, that five-man blitzes that come from the outside on either side. Now, if I wanted to bring pressure, if I wanted to bring pressure from the outside from both sides, it's really simple, and once again, I'm back to calling things, calling things based off of, based off of names. So, if I call a doe blitz, a doe blitz, like give me the dough, give me the money, I call a doe blitz, very simple. Ends hit the B gap. Nose has a two-way go now. Whip comes off edge. Demon comes off edge. The buck and the stud are now your solar and your star. Might linebacker, might linebacker's your hawk. So that's a doe blitz. Give me the doe. We're getting guys outside. From this type of blitz, we're trying to make that quarterback escape where? Up the middle. We want him to stay in the pocket if he's going to escape, he's going to escape up the middle. He only really has here to go. And if he goes here, either the nose is going to get him or one of these linebackers are going to take him because we've got every gap accounted for. We can also run, if you're afraid of bringing the demon and the whip off number two, we can run our base blitz. Base or stab. Base or stab. We're running same thing up front, but this time the buck and the stud are coming off edge. Now, one really fun thing about running base or stab is that these guys can play games. So 
they can decide that they're going to send the end outside and the, the buck inside, or the buck can go outside, the end will go outside, but they're going to stab, they're going to stack and run it that way. Or he can line up and run like a stunt where the end goes and he comes underneath. They, I don't care what they do as long as it's effective, A, and as long as every gap's accounted for. So now our whip and our demon, they're here to be able to go into coverage, to be our solar and our star, or if we wanted to, we could lock those guys up and go man to man. So now I'm up to six different five-man pressures that I've shown you. I showed you um, the bow or the web. I showed you the weak shot. I've showed you the sod or the dose. I've showed you the strong shock. I, sh I gave you um, dough off of the edge. I gave you base or stab off of the edge where they play around. Again, five-man pressures that you're, that you're able to do out of this 3-3 three, three stack. Now, I'm going to show you a few more in this part, and then I'm going to come back and show you some six-man pressures. These have to do with the Mike linebacker. Now, we have a Mike linebacker blitz, and everybody knows that we're talking four-man pressures. Your Mike linebacker most times hitting some type of A-gap. But we can run the mic and the, and the buck. We call that mob. That's a mob blitz. And if we run the mob blitz, we're telling these two guys they're going to hit the A and the B gap. So we're sending the E, we're sending the N, excuse me, and the nose opposite of where the blitz is coming. Now these guys, they can regular mob it or... They can mob twist where the mic goes first, the buck comes underneath, but once again, we have to be gap sound. So these guys are going, this guy knows he's responsible for that B gap in run game, everything is taken care of. We can also run mace, Mace out of this, which is the same thing. Stud, mic goes that way, ends now here. This ends, I mean, nose is left, end is outside. This end is outside. So they can hit their gaps, or we can go mace, we can go mace twist, where this guy comes, mic comes, stud comes off of his butt. So Four more blitzes that I've shown you. That's ten blitzes now. Ten five-man pressures that I've shown you. I'm going to show you two more, and then we're going to move on to some six-man blitzes because sometimes you just need to bring the house. Like Sometimes you're just annoyed by an offensive coordinator. He may have, he may have your number. Um, the offense might just be talking a little noise. Sometimes you want to send the house because you just want to send a message that it is over. There's nothing you can do. But whatever the reason you have for sending the house, as always, you want to make sure that your gap sound. So the last thing I'm going to show you is um, our blitzes, our five-man blitzes, where we send the mic with an, outside, with an outside rusher. So essentially all we're doing is we're taking our demon blitz, which comes off edge, or our, our whip blitz, which comes off edge and brings our end inside, and we're adding it with our mic blitz, which allows this guy to go either way, have a, have a two-way go. So the nose will go there, the, end, the mic will go there, or the nose goes there, mic goes there. So within here, we know we're getting our guys off edge. So if we call a dome blitz, we know we're getting... Demon off edge into the B gap. These guys have a, the mic's going to tell the nose where he's going to go. So he can either send the nose here and he goes there, or he can send the nose opposite. He goes there. We know we're here on the backside. B gap, I mean, the buck defender now knows he has B gap. 
whips doing his job, studs replacing the demon. We can come off the opposite edge. Now the end is going to the B gap. Whip is off edge. Once again, the mic and nose are playing this game. Now this end is off. This demon is in the coverage. This buck is replacing the whip. The stud knows it has the B gap right there. So that's two more. We're now up to 12 different five-man pressures that you can bring, five-man pressures that you can bring from right in here out of the 3-3 stack. So stay tuned. I'm going to give you a few different six-man pressures that you can bring that are really going to make sure that they can't do anything with you inside. So the last blitz we want to put in our six-man pressures has to do with our ability to lock up man-to-man. -man. So remember the why. Number two, can you cover? Because if you can't cover, then six-man pressures probably not going to be the thing you want to get into if you can't cover. So after you ask yourself why you're blitzing, you got to ask yourself and be honest, can I cover? So there's two blitzes. There's two blitzes that I love to run. It's our thunder and our lightning. So our thunder is going to be with all of our linebackers. So we're going to send our linebackers. Now, this is really simple because with our thunder, we have the luxury of allowing them to choose where they're going and play games with their, with their, stack, with their stack, stack linemen. So the linebacker will tell the linemen which way they're going, and then they will go opposite. So for instance, if he touches this end on the left side, the end knows that they're going to go right, backer going out that way. Same thing with the nose. He touches him on the left, nose knows he's going left, I mean right, Mike's going left. If the stud touches this end on the left, end knows it's going out, stud knows it's going in. Every gap is accounted for. We're still out here in our man-to-man. -man. Everybody locked up, locked up, locked up, locked up. Free safety has the back out of the backfield, closing the gap down. So that's our cover zero thunder. But sometimes you want to make sure or you want to not make sure, that's a wrong word, but sometimes you know that the quarterback that you have can get out of there. And so you want to make sure you are covered on the backside. And that's when you come with lightning. And lightning brings both the demon and the whip off edge. And then the buck and the stud know that they have to get out there. So they'll be creeping early to get out and make sure they can cover number two. This is predicated on making sure we get edge pressure that forces this quarterback to step up into the pocket where we have four guys waiting to screw him up. So all we need is for these guys to fly off and make sure that they are, they are at the, 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 the downfield shoulder, not the upfield, but the downfield shoulder of the quarterback so that the quarterback can't escape outside. If the quarterback tries to go left to right, they get hit by the other outside guy. If they try to step up, they get hit by the four people that are crashing all four of those gaps. Now, I didn't forget about you. I told you I was going to tell you how to adjust when people come out in a three-man three set to your five-man pressures. I'm going to do that right now. So... You've already called your, your bold blitz or your web blitz, and you've got a three by one. You've got a three by one. So you know you can't still run these two off and have these three covered. So you're simply going to pop it. You're going to bounce it to the backside. That seems very simple, right? Of course it does. But what if you're getting motion? These are the times where you have to have this built in, where if you get motion to a three,
your Mike linebacker has to be able to call that pop to the opposite side on the fly. But if you've done your due diligence in practice, your demon should already know that if he's the only person on the backside, he's automatically going. So even if you don't get the pop call, you just get them to call off, which they should automatically know they're not coming on a motion, but you need to call it off. You go, hey, check dose, take, check dose, check dose, check dose, check side, check side, check dose, check dose, whatever you're calling it. Now they know, okay, we're going to be in coverage. I'm here. I'm here. I'm dropping, the, I'm dropping here to the middle. Mike's going to come this way, even though he doesn't really have a big hook to curl presence because we got a cornerback back on the backside. That guy comes in motion. This demon automatically knows I'm coming off edge. So if the demon knows he's coming off edge, the end knows that he's going B gap. You get the dose, boom. Stud just knows it's going A. It's going to try to get down there, tap that nose, so that nose knows it's going to the left side. Even if it doesn't get called properly, so say we just have a, we have a bow called and nothing is called, and Mike just says off, off, off. The demon still knows he's coming. So at the very least, we get the four-man pressure the way that we want it. And we're staying consistent to where the back is. So if the back's over here and we're bringing this guy off edge this way, now we've given ourselves an opportunity to be successful. So if you have a five-man pressure call with an outside guy and they go to a three-by-one, you just pop it to the opposite side. But if you have a five-man pressure call with interior guys, interior guys, you don't have to change anything. Now, the only thing you really have to be cognizant of is if you go three by one, and let's say you had a mob call, right? This guy is here, but that guy still has to get to the middle. So you're good. You already know what you're doing. This guy knows I'm going to apex two and three. When he comes over, I'm going to apex two and three. I'm going to collision two as two goes vertical. I'm going to carry if nothing shows. If something shows, I'm going to drop into my hook to curl. I'm going to rally to anything short. So now we're still taken care of. So if you have any inside blitzes from these stat backers, you don't have to change anything. Go with what you know. Go with what makes the kids feel comfortable, and you'll have success. That's all we have for today on X and O's, the Joes. If you have any questions, make sure you put any questions or, or comments in the comment section. Leave us a message. Make sure that you like this video. Make sure that you subscribe. Subscribe to the video or subscribe to the channel. We're getting so much content up. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things going on. When we, when we get our world back and we're able to go back out into the world, there's going to be much more coming. I've got some really, really fun things planned, including an NFL version of Team by the State. You want to make sure that you check that out when it comes out. It's going to be a fun little project that I'm working on that hopefully will be done sooner rather than later. But until then, for X and O's to Joe's, I'm Gene Clemens. And make sure if you want to get one of these shirts, if you want to get an X and O's to Joe's shirt, leave a comment in the comments. Um, or you can go to SayLessSports.com. It's still maybe some quirks, but... You know, if you put an order in, we're going to get that thing out to you as soon as possible. There'll be none of this. You've got to wait for three weeks or four weeks until we get enough orders. If you want a shirt, you're going to get it very, very soon. So if you're, if you're interested in it, let me know. Go to Say Less Sports. You know what to do. Until then, I'm Gene Clemens. 
X and O's to Joe's. Y'all have a wonderful day.